Okay, so let's build a Marvel Legends scale Wakanda throne for Black Panther. Here it is in its first stages, but let's rewind. First of all, we got to build it. <laughs> Hello and welcome once again to Jacob's Toys. Please do like, share, subscribe and all of those things. All support to the channel is very much appreciated. Now this is what I'm going to use to build my Wakanda throne. It is underfloor heating uh, sheets. You can get this off of various places like eBay and Amazon. And it's really cool because it's quite firm. But it's very easy to score and to mark and to put details in. So here's a craft knife. And as you can see you can just cut away at it quite easy. To be perfectly honest with you I think my, my knife's quite blunt. The sharper the knife is the easier the cut. But it's a great material to work with especially when it comes to diorama building and bits and pieces like that. So I'm going to use these offcuts. I've got a load of offcuts from various different bits of diorama that I've built and I've decided I'm going to build a couple of thrones. The first of which is the Wakanda throne, the one that you see in the Black Panther comics and of course the uh, Black Panther movies. Now you want to get yourself a figure. I just grabbed Sleepwalker here. Reason being is it's quite a standard body shape with articulation etc. But why am I not using a Black Panther figure, you may ask? Well, I always found that when it comes to diorama building and things like that, it's easier to use a kind of generic body type just because then you have options moving forward. So Sleepwalker was the most generic one that I had at hand. So I'm just going to get him into kind of a seated position just so that I can work out the scales. Now, I don't really measure anything using a ruler. Um, I just kind of freehand it a little bit. The only time I use a ruler really is when I... I want a straight line so I want to find something that I can prop him up on just so that I can make sure that I've got the scales right but yeah that looks good you want to make sure that the feet are flat on the floor and the legs are bent at the same kind of angle and you'll kind of want to get the arms out roughly where you would want the arm rests so here he is in the seated position without an actual throne in place I'm just going to lean him against the wall there in the back Grab yourself a craft knife, you can get these from most craft stores, um, they usually come with a handful of different blades. Get yourself a pen or a pencil, I've just got a black biro here. Um, I know I said I don't use a ruler, but the type of ruler that I do use for straight edges is one of these ones, it's the metal ruler. I've just found that these are easier because you're then not going to cut that with the knife. Um, with the handle on top it's good to push down and, and apply some pressure as well. And of course you want the board. Now it comes in various different colours and shapes and thicknesses and stuff. You can get it in different millimetre thicknesses. Um, and I've got a handful of different pieces. Now the Wakanda throne is circular. So I was trying to figure out how I could do that with the foam without kind of shaping and all the rest of it. Um, and I moved a roll of tape and I was like that's actually the ideal shape. So all I've done is I've marked the, the lines on the tape so that I can get the, the cut even. And I've just cut the roll of tape in, in half. Well, not the actual roll of tape, but the, the cardboard on the inside of the roll of tape. So if I've worked this out correctly, it should make... Yeah, there you go. That that actually looks quite good. Um, I think I'll use this side because it's a little shallower. Yeah, now that's not a bad fit at all. So there we go. So I'm going to use the inside of a roll of tape as the, the kind of seat area and just kind of build up from there. Now, one of the other things that you're going to want to do is put the actual chair bit, the actual kind of bit that they, the character will sit on. So you're going to have to have a little bit of a play around. Now, what I did is I just kind of marked out where I wanted that on the sheet of foam. Sorry about the angle there, it's a bit hard to see. But I worked out where I wanted that on the sheet of foam and just kind of cut away at it so that it would sit in there. So let's just do that. I'll just fast forward a little bit so that we can get to the, the good stuff. So with this piece, it was a case of trial and error and just kind of taking chunks out of the foam until I got a flush fit. Now it doesn't matter if there are some gaps, I'll show you what we do a little bit later, but I wanted to get as flush of a fit as possible. So I was just kind of trimming away at the edges here just to kind of create almost like a, a circular part in the in the foam so that it would sit in the cardboard piece. So here we go, there we go, it took me about two minutes to do and if we have a look, there we go, perfect, absolutely perfect. So we've now got a seated area for the character, or more specifically Black Panther, to sit on when on the throne. So there we go, that's that's how it's going to look. So let's just try it out. There we go, he sits on there quite nicely, as I hoped. Now we will put all this in place a little bit later, but for now I'm just going to put that bit aside, because I'm going to work on the, the base of the, the throne. Now the base of the throne is... At a bit of an angle. Um, I'm just going to cut away the excess here at the back, just 
so that it's gone. Don't worry too much about how messy the back looks. It's only about that front piece that you really need to worry about because the back is going to be hidden. Um, but yeah, the base of the throne is a little bit different. So let's just switch the angle quickly. Um, the base of the throne is a, a bit of an angle. It kind of comes out from the bottom a slight angle. So what I've done is I've just kind of drawn around the, the cardboard piece with a pen. I'm going to cut that out with a knife and then I just kind of created the angles. Like, as I said, I don't really measure things. I just kind of do it by eye um, and I, I just kind of create the shape that I wanted to based on the images that I've looked up on Google. So I've got a bigger knife here. It's just a standing knife. So this is easier for cutting straight lines, I find. Um, I'm just going to cut that piece out of the base. And then what I want to do is you'll want to do this twice because you'll need a piece for the front and, of course, a piece for the back as well. Now the underfloor, underfloor heating sheet, or the underfloor, what are they called exactly? Underfloor heating sheets, I think that's the, the correct term for them. But they're available on places like Amazon and eBay and you usually get them in kind of multi-packs. Now they do come quite big. They're not expensive for what they are, but you do get a lot of foam for your money. So do check them out. There we go, that fits in there nicely. Perfect, absolutely perfect. So you can see already just from these two bits of foam and the cardboard tube that it's already starting to take shape. Now, as I said, you want to do this again. You want to have two of these, so one for the front and one for the back. But yeah, as I was saying, the, the underfloor heating sheets aren't that expensive. They're not um, insulation sheets, sorry, not heating sheets. Underfloor insulation sheets. Um, they're not that expensive, and I was really shocked when I first got them how big they are they are you know a good couple of meters long um, and you can get them in different widths now um, in different thicknesses now this one that I'm using here is about a centimeter thick and you can get it in like half a centimeter or two centimeters um, I find that the centimeter thick one is probably my most favorable because it's still no matter how you cut it it's still quite solid um, the thinner one is good for detailing and, and sort of base pieces and stuff but yeah, the, the centimetre thick one is, is my one of choice. Now, there are two different colours. I didn't get to select what colour I had. The grey one is definitely better. I think it's uh, better because you're not kind of hiding that pink, pinky purple colour. But I wasn't actually given the option at checkout. One time I ordered them, I received grey ones. Another time I ordered them, I received these kind of purpley ones. So for the sake of just a bit of variety, I'll just do one in the pink and one in the grey, just so you can see the two different types. Now they're exactly the same foam at the end of it. There's no difference in the actual foam, um, in how they cut, how they paint or anything like that. Um, it's literally just the colour. So I just prefer the grey. But as I said, I'm using offcuts here. So I'm, I'm one for kind of keeping hold of things because if you're building dioramas, you're always going to you know, be able to use cut-offs for bricks and rubble and debris and stuff like that so I've kind of got a bag of, of offcuts weirdly shaped offcuts so I had a bit of a um, scan through it and and just picked out a few bits that were, were big enough for me to do what I was hoping to do with this Wakanda throne so it's a bit of a process I've kind of recorded this all in real time so that you get an idea of how it works or if you want to follow along then you can do it as well but I've not sped up much of this video there's a couple of bits that I've sped up but for the most part these two tutorials I'm going to do this in a part one and a part two so the building and then the painting um, but you can kind of follow along so here we go here are the two kind of base pieces if you like and you can see here that it's already starting to take shape and this is the fun bit where we get the hot glue gun out so a glue gun or a hot glue gun I've used the same one for years and years so it's really ancient now but you can get glue guns from pretty much everywhere from supermarkets to hobby stores um, and they're, they're a really useful tool, tool. Just be careful because they do obviously get very hot. Now when you're putting this on you just need to make sure you get it in the right place. Um, I think I've put that on slightly off so I'm going to have to move that. Hang on let's just have a bit of a move around with that because I think I've put that in a slightly wrong position. Yeah I have gonna have to move it so a little bit of force nice thing about the hot glue gun is that it, it does kind of you can move it for a little bit but naturally you want it to set as quickly as possible so applying a bit of pressure to that will um, will allow for that to set uh, just be careful obviously when you're using a hot glue gun I, I don't I'm not giving you you know warnings or anything but I've burnt myself countless amounts of time 
um, using a hot glue gun. Uh, one of the qu common things that I ask uh, get asked about this is that because when you put hot glue on polystyrene, it melts the polystyrene, um, and people have been asking whether it melts this foam, and it doesn't. And that's one of the reasons why I really enjoy using it for diorama building because you can use hot glue on it and it doesn't melt the foam. I mean, naturally, if you put a lot of heat on it, it will kind of melt down a little bit. But the amount of glue that you want to use for projects like this, it doesn't melt the doesn't melt the foam at all. So there we go. So there's the two kind of base pieces on the cardboard roll. And then we're just going to put a bit more glue on the inside as well so we can put the, the seat piece. Now, as I said, it's all a little bit uneven because I kind of do it all by eye as opposed to measuring it out. If you want to measure it out, you can do, but I just find it a bit more of a fun process to kind of just do it as I go and just sort of see how things work. Um, here's a seat piece. Let's just put a little bit of glue on that. Now, you don't have to have absolutely tons of glue the good thing about the the hot glue gun is obviously the glue spreads, so you don't have to put loads and loads on. You can see the smoke coming off of it there. Um, but just put enough on that you think is going to hold it. There we go, just put that in place there. Now of course you can buy these thrones, they are available 3D printed, so you can buy them from a number of different people on various different sites. And there are a few toy companies that have actually released these as well like hot toys do uh, a throne i think but naturally for a, a six inch figure that one's going to be too big um the only ones that i've found for six inch figures are 3d printed or you know custom kits that you can buy that are also you know 3d printed i assume um but it's just more fun making it i find um so yeah there we go so anyway let's move on to the back piece now the back piece has it's quite a simple design so that's one of the reasons why I decided to pick this one. It is literally what you've seen there, I think, is the most complicated piece of figuring out how to make that kind of semicircle throne piece. The rest of it is quite simple looking. So it's got like a big oval back piece and then these two kind of almost tusk pieces as well. So I've already cut the tusks out. I actually didn't film those, but they are literally a case of just you know drawing them out and and cutting them out there's there's not really anything exciting or groundbreaking about that and then what i've opted to do with the back piece is run it all the way to the floor so i'm going to get the circular look behind the figure but i'm going to add a little bit more stability to the throne by creating almost like a tombstone looking piece so there we go so it fits in nicely so it goes all the way to the floor but all you'll see is the actual curved bit at the top so that was really simple and luckily I had an off cut that was big enough for that and you can just see there at the back of the screen there's the tusks so what I did is I, I drew one out based on the size of the throne the size of the figure and then once I'd cut that out I flipped that over and drew around it and then cut out the the drawing the outline that I drew so that they were both the same size so that was quite straightforward to do um, and to be perfectly honest with you, I, I've not planned any of this. I'm, I'm making it up as I go along. So what you're seeing me film is is my trial and error. I'm, I've not kind of planned any of it. I've not, yeah, not not kind of got a plan at all. Just kind of doing it as I go. So there we go. That that's I actually think that looks quite good. And then you put these two tusk pieces on the side, and that they fit pretty pretty snugly. Um, yeah, I'm I'm happy with that. So again, just going to use the hot glue gun to put these pieces in place. And then we've pretty much assembled the throne. There's a couple more pieces that we'll add to it, but that's that's essentially the base of the throne made. Um I do want to kind of make the armrests a little bit bigger, but we'll get to that in a second. So, let's just get the hot glue gun ready and get those on. What I'm doing now is just cutting the, I'm going to call them tusks because they've got like a tusk look to them, but I'm just cutting those down a little bit. So just taking, I took about a centimeter off the bottom just so that they were a bit more in proportion because I made them a bit too big. So put them together, put one on top of the other and then just cut through them the right size. So unfortunately because of the angle and the distance from the camera, you can't see the top of the tusks in this video, uh, in this particular shot of the video, but yeah that's all I did I just cut them down a little bit um, but yeah I, I really like the way that looks just making sure that it all matches up how it should do 
as you can see there that's the back and as I said they are off cuts so you can see here where I was mixing paints on this particular piece to get uh, the right um, the right color for another diorama so I've just stuck the back piece on and what I'm doing is I'm running hot glue up the side of the back piece and then a little bit on the back of the throne for the first of the tusks so I don't want to overdo it because I also don't want loads of glue spilling out on the seams because that's even more of a nightmare because you've then got to kind of cut that away and because of the the nature of the foam if you do slip with a knife you can take a big chunk out of the the thing that you're building and that's just a nightmare so only use as much glue as necessary otherwise you're going to be finding yourself in a bit of a predicament but I think one thing that is nice about these uh, foam sheets is that you do get so much you really can sort of have a bit of trial and error when I first started using them I definitely ended up wasting a lot more than I used because I was just sort of trying things out seeing what worked learning sort of new techniques and stuff um, but as I said they are great big pieces they come in a massive box so if you order one or you order five it's still going to be as tall the box is still going to be as tall because obviously they can't be folded up um, they're quite easy to store if you've got the space to store them and they're quite flat so well, obviously they're flat but you can put them behind a cabinet or something like that that's actually where mine lived for quite some time I, I put them behind my display cabinet um, but there we go it all stuck together so you can see there in like what 15 minutes I've cut and stuck all of these all of these parts of the frame now this is a bit that I did do off camera I basically traced around the cardboard tube again and then made like a, a thicker piece to stick on the front because there's some really nice um, Wakandan sort of language text and symbols on the front of the th throne and what I have at the moment I wouldn't be able to do I wouldn't be able to paint those on also it's very exposed you can see how it's made up so putting one of these kind of vanity pieces on the front I call them because it kind of hides a lot of the seams putting that on the front not only works well for the the paint and the design it also covers up kind of a lot of the the bits that are joining together so I've just put the glue along the line of the cardboard roll and then just make sure that I match this up the right way and it just sticks on the front there and this shouldn't interfere with your figure sitting down on the throne it does add kind of like you know just shy of a centimeters worth of thickness um, but this was made out of the thinner piece of foam that I had so you know I said that there was two two widths well this was made out of the thinner piece so as was the back and the tusks as well so yeah luckily for me I had off cuts of, of both sizes but this wouldn't look out of place using all one thickness I just grabbed the first piece now I'm just shaving off the top of that kind of vanity piece so that it sits flush with the uh, the, the cardboard tube there we go uh, that doesn't actually look too bad I'm quite chuffed with that so what's that like 20 minutes and I've essentially got the bones of of a throne for Black Panther to sit on now for me these things are cool for action figure photography or for displays if you want your Black Panther figure on display in your cabinet with the characters around it then this is a, a great piece to to have um, I didn't really want to shell out the amount of money for the 3d printed one because I found them quite expensive now this is where the magic happens grab a some grout so this can be picked up in in pound shops or dollar shops or supermarkets don't go for a really expensive one and you just want to get a little bit on your finger like that and then just start kind of filling the the seams so this will help when it comes to painting now I made many a mistake of not doing this stage in the early days of kind of putting um, diorama pieces together and you think that things are hidden but when you paint them they're really not so you can see here just these these seams here on the front from the side piece well actually I didn't even film that bit so I cut another piece to stick on the side between the two so that very straightforward just the, the width of the chair and glued it on but the seams don't show up that much when you're looking at the actual throne but when you paint it they're really obvious so I actually go over all of the seams with with some of this um, grout now when it comes to painting as well this is where I get a lot of questions about how does paint affect this uh, underfloor um, insulation sheets 
if you're using paint out of a tin or out of a pot it won't be affected if you're using spray paint it does tend to erode the the um the sheets a little bit not a huge amount and i find that if you're making something that's made out of stone like a stone throne that i have done in another video spray paint on this is great because it does give it an extra level of texture but if you're doing something like this that you obviously want to be nice and solid and flat then i would recommend kind of running the grout all over it just so that it creates a barrier between the, the sheet of foam and the spray paint or if you're not going to use spray paint then you don't need to do the grout um the grout covering but definitely do the grout for all of the the seams and stuff believe me you will thank me later um it's it can be a real pain in the backside if you you make something that's supposed to be kind of flush and, and solid like this and then you spray paint it and it goes all bobbly it's a real kick in the teeth um but yeah just be really nice and generous with it because of it being grout it's very easily sandable so don't worry too much if it's not completely flat um just make sure you get all those seams filled and you can grab a little bit of sandpaper a little bit later and sand it down and make it nice and give it a nice finish um but yeah essentially that is the the building stages so just finding the right shapes having a little bit of trial and error uh hot gluing them together and then covering all the seams with grout or the whole thing with grout if you're going to spray paint it but yeah that is the first stage of my black panther wakanda throne um so yeah so just while i fill in the rest of these holes with grout um, do check out my channel because I'm going to do a part two. Now the reason I've done this in two parts is just because I wanted to film it in the best, as close to real time as possible. Um, and if I did the whole thing with painting and everything, then it would just be a ridiculously long video. So I thought I'd do it in a couple of different parts. Um, but yeah, do check out my channel. I'm going to be uploading the part two very soon. Um, if you've got any questions, then obviously pop them in the comments below or drop me a message. Um, but hopefully you found this quite useful. And I really hope that some people kind of follow along and, and do their own versions as well. Um, but yeah, I'm really pleased with how it's looking. I'm really excited to let it dry, uh, let this grout dry and get painting on it. Because yeah, I'm really excited to see how this turns out. So yeah, there we go. The Wakanda throne for Black Panther. Um, obviously, thank you very much for watching. Please do like, share, subscribe, comment, all of those things. Um, all support to the channel is very much appreciated. And do come back, tune in for part two to see how we paint it and how obviously it looks um, with a figure in it. Um, if you want to see how I put it to use, then check out my Instagram. That is Jacobs underscore toys. Um, you can see all my kind of action figure photography and other bits and pieces over there. But yeah, thanks very much for watching. Um, let's see how it turns out.